I'm Julian Morris and I'm Vice President of Research at Reason Foundation, which is a non-profit, non-partisan think tank based in the United States. Looking at the issue of tobacco harm reduction and tobacco uh, control. And the purpose of the meeting is to uh, seek to identify solutions to the major problem of smoking and other harmful tobacco use around the world. Uh, Reason Foundation has been actively involved in the identification and uh, uh, Reason Foundation has been actively involved in the identification of solutions to the problem of harmful tobacco use for many years and we are keen to ensure that there is a good understanding uh, here in India, and especially around the time of this international meeting, of the types of intervention that can be most effective. So the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control seeks to reduce harmful tobacco use. And the Framework Convention Alliance um, has, over many years, advocated smoking cessation through uh, the advocacy of re uh, increased taxation, um, and other demand reduction strategies, as well as supply reduction. Uh, recently, some of the members of the Framework Convention Alliance, as well as Reason Foundation and many other harm reduction experts, um, have been arguing that a, an, a, an important additional uh, policy approach that is included in the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control um, is, is harm reduction. So that's in addition to trying to reduce demand for existing tobacco products, it's this, the idea that there might be a, a possibility of people switching from more harmful tobacco products to less harmful products that have the same kind of effect. Um, one important example of which is the e-cigarette or the vape product. Um, these, these products provide many of the same uh, benefits to users as, uh, as conventional cigarettes. So they, they provide nicotine in many cases, not always, but they can provide nicotine. They provide sort of the sensation of, of, of smoking without m really any of the harmful effects. Certainly uh, very, very, very much uh, lower harm. Public Health England has uh, concluded that the uh, use of vape products is about 95% safer than smoking. So, so Reason Foundation and Public Health England and the Royal College of Physicians and many other uh, experts on uh, tobacco harm reduction are keen to ensure that uh, these types of products are made available with appropriate regulation. Well, I mean, no, no doubt there are instances of tobacco industry seeking to influence how the FCTC works, just as there are um, other companies, other industries seeking to influence how the FCTC operates the pharmaceutical industry, most obviously since the pharmaceutical industry produces um, alternatives to, uh, to uh, tobacco harm reduction products. So they produce um, products that enable some smokers to quit more easily um, and they, they produce uh, nicotine products that compete with, uh, with vape products. So, so there's been certainly a lot of influence of, of, of industry in the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control from all sides. Um, I'm obviously very concerned that, that, that there might be uh, influence that would inhibit harm reduction strategies being uh, adopted. Um, both from tobacco companies that um, don't want competition from alternative sources of nicotine, as well as from pharmaceutical companies who don't want competition to their products. I, mean, I think the FCTC has certainly tried very hard to come up with policies that will effectively reduce the harmful effects of, of smoking and other tobacco use around the world. I think that there's been a resistance to adopting uh, harm reduction, even though harm reduction is part of the tobacco control 
um, a strategy of the FCTC, it hasn't really fully uh, embraced it. Um, and I think, but I think now is the time for the FCTC to do, to do that. Um, in, in terms of its, its responsibilities, I think it has been a little bit remiss. Well, I don't think anyone's arguing for a totally open and unregulated participation, but I think broadening participation so that people who are affected by the policies, especially uh, consumers of both tobacco products and other nicotine products, I think there is a need for those people to, to be involved in the process. Um, you know, there's, a, there's an old saying, um, no, nothing about us without us, that has been a mantra of uh, users of, of products who are faced with uh, government policies that have not taken their interests into account. Um, and the use of that mantra, I think, is, is appropriate here in, at, the, at the FCTC, where um, some policies have been discussed uh, that would not be in the interests either of smokers um, or of, uh, of people who have switched already to less harmful products. Because there are millions, hundreds of millions of smokers who would no doubt benefit enormously from having access to harm reduction products. And if they're not given a voice, if they're not allowed to be um, uh, able to engage with governments and, and, and the FCTC as a whole, then they're less likely to have their voice heard and they're less likely to have policies that are beneficial towards them and able to improve their health. Well, we've talked to a number of people who are advisors to the government. We've, we've, we've uh, both uh, sent them information and uh, we, we've had meetings with, with, with various uh, people, not government officials directly, but we've had meetings with advisors to government. Um, and hopefully that their, our perspective is gradually uh, being uh, received by government officials. Everything depends on what, it fa what in fact is decided uh, at the FCTC. If the FCTC decides that uh, there is a need to open up access to harm reduction products, then that would be a good thing. If then governments adopt those policies, um, so there are many governments in the world that have banned uh, certain harm reduction products, especially e-cigarettes. Um, if those governments, are on the basis of the FCTC, suggesting that uh, bans are, are not a, an effective and, and appropriate solution. If the FCTC makes that recommendation, then uh, it's likely that some countries that currently have bans will shift their policies. Um, I, I say that because very often uh, a large number of countries uh, who are members of the FCTC do adopt the FCTC uh, 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 advised policies. So, I mean, if the FCTC comes up with the right approach to harm reduction technologies, then uh, that would be a good thing. If it comes up with the wrong policy, and there's a problem, uh, sorry, there's a, there's a potential problem with uh, the, uh, some of the documents that were produced in advance of the FCTC, um, one of which uh, focused on the uh, issue of, of regulation of, uh, of, of what the WHO calls ends. So, I mean, what is likely, as I understand it right now, is that there won't be recommendations on electronic nicotine delivery systems or e-cigarettes. And, and so that that's, that that is is, is a, a neutral solution right now. Um, and I think that there needs to be more better understanding uh, among governments around the world and the FCTC um, in, in particular of the potential for these technologies. And hopefully, if they don't adopt a, a, a policy which is more positive towards harm reduction technologies now, uh, then they will do so in the future.